Uh, my name is David Jones, and I'm a di director at Menorm Globe. I first went to Guerrero in 1994 with Tech, uh, project manager for what became the Los Filos project. I was hired by Tech as a gold scarn expert, if you will. Uh, we found 4 million ounces of gold resource uh, for about $15 million. A little bit less than $4 an ounce in the ground, starting from nothing. After leaving Tech in 1999, uh, I went on to actually acquire properties. Uh, one of those is Welcos del Destino for Menorum Gold. And I did that based on the similarity to Los Filos, as I understood it at the time. Uh, subsequent to that, I was also working with Peñola, at Bermejal. I worked with Grupo Mexico on what's now the Morelos Sur, which uh, was recently picked up by Agnico. I did extensive work for them. I worked with Enrique Miranda's group on what is now Timmins Gold. Did a lot of work regionally for them. Uh, and I helped Fred Stanford and Terry McGibbon and Michael Murphy start up uh, Gleeson which became Torrance School. I was the technical guy and gave them that advice. Uh, and at the time, I predicted that I was comfortable saying there'd be at least 10 million ounces found. And at the time, there was only about 3.9 known. And now they've more than doubled that. Uh, in about the time frame, I thought they would. So I've been very lucky to see most of these projects over a long period of time. And I have a pretty good feel for the upside potential. And there's a lot more to be found. And I think Menorum has a good shot at finding another uh, mineralized center. Colbo is a very productive region uh, for fundamental geologic reasons, that being that at the beginning of the tertiary period, there was a magmatic arc that formed over a very short period of time over the trend of what is now the Guerrero Gold Belt. And these intrusives all had the same general composition, and they're very specifically located along a, a regional structural trend that focused all of that gold in a very small area. The Guerrero Gold Belt is about 80 kilometers uh, in length, 80 kilometers geologically, meaning the same types of intrusions are found along an 80 kilometer roughly linear trend, northwest, southeast. Uh, probably a third of which has never been explored uh, at all, let alone with any concerted effort. The trend, the trend was effectively Peñolas' discovery at Bermejal, one million ounces, and the old Nukai open pit mine, which maybe had a few hundred thousand ounces. Uh, that was just uh, within a kilometer or two. Just to remind our viewers that the, what is now Torex Gold was bought on a bid that we submitted on behalf of Tech. We got that for about $2.1 million outright purchase. $2.1 million for a, a property that now has over 11 million ounces in combined resource reserve. Torex Gold. In, in the geology business, there's a lot of historical, I hate to call it dogma, but I will, about how oxides are typically supergene, meaning that they've been enriched by surface weathering processes. The Guerrero Gold Belt is, a lot of these deposits are dominated by what we call hypogene iron oxides, meaning that it was part of the actual gold mineralizing event. So the oxides are not from the surface down, the oxides came from, if you will, the bottom up. And they're directly, especially at Los Filos and Bermejal, they're directly associated with gold mineralization. And that model had never been applied, certainly not in Mexico, and, and rarely in any other kind of deposit in the world that I'm aware of. And we call it, I call it a retrograde scar. Uh, retrograde scars are common, but hypogene iron oxide was probably the thing that was the most important gaining of knowledge that led us to finding more, more gold mineralization in the belt. It wasn't so much leading to discovery as it was leading to gaining an understanding of how to model the deposit and subsequently mine it. Uh, very important that you understood that there was a hypogene oxidizing event because of course that changes the metallurgy recovery, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that would be the biggest contribution. I, in the terms of where that may take us in the future, recognizing similar styles of alteration at Menorum's Volcos del Destino project, which has never yet been drilled. That is important. And seeing that at Volcos del Destino on Menorum's property, seeing the same thing we saw at Los Filos, that's a critical to understanding the potential of the system. Okay, over the last 30 years, starting in about 1987, when Peñoles made their first discovery at what was called Bermejal, uh, there have been over 30 million ounces of resources discovered, so that's averaging about a million ounces of new resources per year. 
Outlook for the Grow Gold Belt, I would expect uh, we will see millions, several million, maybe 10 million more ounces found in the next 10, 10 years. As long as the money is invested to explore for it. It's all dependent on the money that's put in. Starting in the northwest corner, I think Timmins has got a good chance of expanding their resource. Uh, if, if my recollection is correct, I think that's about 2 million ounces plus or minus. I, I think once they get their feet under them and do more ex exploration in the area, they'll, they'll, they'll ramp that up significantly. I think Torex Gold will continue finding a lot more than they found. I think they're going to find a lot more than they are aware of, and I was involved in actually starting that up with, with Fred Stanford and company, and I have a lot of optimism about that. Same thing for uh, Leo Gold Mining. I think that they will have success if they're willing to put money in the ground. Uh, deep, high-grade uh, underground mines, I think that the, those are will be pretty open-ended. Could be millions more ounces there. Uh, and then, of course, Manorum Gold. We have two projects at the south edge of the belt. Uh, one has been drilled lightly and the other one not at all. Lay Gold Mining uh, recently uh, made an agreement to purchase Los Filos from Goldcore. Uh, there are currently approximately 2 million ounces of reserves to find and another 11, 12 million ounces of resources. I think there's a lot more to be found there, and if they're willing to aggressively explore the project, including deep drilling for high-grade underground targets, I think they'll have a lot of success. And I, th I my guess is they'll be able to expand that by at least 25 to 50% with an aggressive exploration program.